Welcome to PMA channel. The topic of uh, this lecture is frequency modulation. As I have already told you, there are three parameters in a wave. For example, we have got this wave EC, which is the carrier wave. EC is carrier wave. This has got three parameters. One of the parameters is this AC. Now, AC is the amplitude and omega C is the frequency in this equation. And this omega C and D, this is the phase. We have got three parameters. One is this amplitude. Second is frequency omega C and then omega C D, which is the phase. We can vary three parameters of a wave with respect to another wave. If we vary amplitude, then we get amplitude modulation, which, are, which we have done in our previous lectures. And if we vary the frequency, then we get frequency modulation, which uh, we shall do in this lecture. And if we vary the phase of a T ratio, this is the T ratio. This whole of this angle, whole of this angle is phase. This omega C and D. If I write here, this is omega C and D. This forms the phase. Phase normally we represent it by angle theta or by phi. Now, three kinds of modulation are possible. Amplitude, frequency, and phase. Amplitude has been done. Frequency will be done in this lecture. Now, note down one more thing. Omega C is 2 pi FC. This omega C is what? Angular frequency. And this FC is simply frequency. Omega M is angular frequency. FM is simple frequency. Now, we have given here two signals, EC, EC signal, EC stands for, this C stands for carrier wave, this M, M here, it stands for modulating wave, C stands for carrier wave, EC represents carrier wave and EM represents modulating signal or the information signal which is to be transmitted. Now, the maximum about by which the frequency of a modulated can be shifted above or below is carrier frequency. We can shift uh, the frequency of uh, a carrier wave that is FC. FC is the frequency of a carrier wave. You can just shift it by an amount, the maximum amount by which you can shift is integral multiple of this FM. FM is the frequency of the modulating signal. For example, look at the diagram here. This is FC. FC is the frequency of the carrier wave. Now, we have subtracted FM. This gap, this gap is equal to FM. FM is the frequency of the modulating signal. This gap again is FM. This gap and whole of this gap is to FM. This gap is FM. And this gap is FM. This gap is again FM. And now we will shift it further. Now if I shift it further, for example, by another FM. If this is FC, this is FC minus F, this is FC minus F2, and this will be FC minus 3FM. On the same lines, here I shall be FC plus 3FM. This is 3FM. We shall be having equations like this. Now, in case of amplitude modulation, we have got only two sets of band. One is FC minus FM and other is FC plus FM. But in case of frequency modulation, we have got a large number of bands. Though only um, a few are effective, but we are definitely having a very large number. You can say infinite number. We can have infinite number of side bands. Note it down. We can have infinite number of side bands. Infinite number of side bands. While in case of amplitude modulation, 
we have got only one sideband. Here we can have infinite number of sidebands. Now another point that is to be kept in mind is that only a few of them are effective. Everyone is not effective. For example, sidebands, they are separated from the carrier wave by F2, F, M3, M. We have done it. I have just uh, shown it on the diagram. You can revisit the diagram once again. Now the next point is, sidebands, they are at equal distance. First is they are at equal distance. And second point is their amplitude is equal. Another aspect is equal distance and then equal amplitude. Second aspect is equal amplitude. One is equal distance, noted down, equal distance from carrier frequency and equal in amplitude. All signals having same amplitude will change carrier frequency by the same amount. And the rest of uh, the data is uh, or the points are not that much important. Only a few of them are important. First, they are, they are equidistant from the carrier frequency. Their amplitudes are same. They are infinite in number. And only first few of them are effective. And this is a diagram on which we have to uh, focus now. MT is the signal or the you can say modulating wave this is the carrier wave the responsibility of carrier wave is to carry the signal it is just a carrier you can assume it like a bus or a train that carries the signal its main objective is to carry and now what is done in frequency modulation when the as the displacement increases in case of modulating signal, the frequency increases. And when it starts decreasing here, the frequency decreases. And at this particular point, the frequency is minimum. Again, frequency starts increasing like this. It becomes maximum when the displacement is maximum. In this way, we get a frequency modulated wave by varying the frequency of carrier wave with respect to the modulating signal. Now the amount of frequency deviation, another important point is the amount of frequency deviation. The amount of frequency deviation is proportional to instantaneous value of the modulating signal. Delta is directly proportional to EM. Thus, louder the audio signal, greater will be the frequency range, frequency change. Louder the signal, greater will be the frequency change. And now, another, here you can also visualize, now what is the bandwidth? And a, a very important point is bandwidth. Bandwidth in case of frequency modulation, please note it down. Bandwidth in case of frequency modulation is 2n times modulating frequency. This is 2n times the modulating frequency. Where n is the number of significant sidebands as there are infinite sidebands in case of frequency modulation. But all of them are not significant. We just take into consideration only those bands which are significant. Or one thing you can say, bandwidth, if I just write it, note it down, bandwidth in case of bandwidth in case of, I will just write it BW in case of amplitude modulation. is equal to bandwidth in case of frequency modulation divided by n or more easily I can write bandwidth in 
frequency modulation b stands for bandwidth this is is equal to n times bandwidth in amplitude modulation b stands for bandwidth here now another type of modulation is pulse modulation now what is pulse modulation we have got pulse amplitude modulation first in this case amplitude is varied amplitude of carrier frequency is varied in this case pulse duration or width is varies in this case pulse position is varied let us see let us understand all this from this diagram so here this is the signal modulating signal and uh, pulse amplitude modulation this was a square wave having same amplitude but here the amplitude of the pulse goes on rising when the displacement rises it goes on falling when the displacement falls so this is pulse amplitude and here it is the duration it is the duration of the pulse this is the duration of the pulse this is pulse duration when this displacement is maximum duration of the pulse is maximum it goes on decreasing as the displacement of modulating signal decreases so the, in this case the parameter that we vary is duration in this case the parameter of the carrier wave that we vary is amplitude in this case the parameter of the carrier wave that we vary is position and the last all these three they are considered to be non digital all these three are considered to be non digital only one modulation or they are not completely digital but this pulse code modulation this pcm pulse code modulation is completely digital the whole purpose of this diagram is just to make you remember this fact that this is completely digital they are partially digital and this is completely digital pulse code modulation 